Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for joining us for our worship today. Uh, we are starting our Lenten midweek series titled Praying the Psalms. So each week we're going to be looking at a certain type of psalm uh, that we see throughout uh, the entirety of the 150 psalms written. Um, this week we're looking at the Psalms of Wisdom. So we're going to be looking at what exactly that means and what is typically entailed in these psalms of wisdom uh, while looking at a specific one, uh, Psalm 1, the first psalm listed. We will be using uh, the order of Vespers on page 229 uh, in your hymnal. And um, one thing to note is that uh, there are two spots in the service where uh, there are Lenten responses. Uh, there's common responses and then during certain seasons, Advent and Lent, there are other responses listed. So on the bottom of the first page, there are 229, there is a Lent response. And then after the readings, there is a responsory for the season of Lent. So just be on the lookout for those two things uh, when you get there so you don't say something you're not supposed to. Um, <laughs> the dreaded A word during the season of Lent. Um, so, so be on the lookout for those. And then one quick note, if you haven't gotten one already, uh, these are the Lenten devotionals uh, that, that we've put out. Uh, so if you haven't picked, picked yours up yet, please do. Um, it has uh, a few words from Martin Luther about the Psalms and why they're beneficial, uh, as well as one Psalm each day uh, to pray throughout the season of Lent. So we'll be referencing some of those. Um, and then just to help us together as a congregation pray the psalms uh, throughout this season. So we will begin uh, with the opening versicles on page 229. Please stand. O Lord, O 
open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in season, and its leaf does not wither, and all that he does he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. You may be seated. First reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 5. These words the Lord spoke to all your assembly at the mountain, out of the midst of the fire, the cloud, and the thick darkness, with a loud voice, and he added no more. And he wrote them on two tablets of stone and gave them to me. And as soon as you heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, While the mountain was burning with fire, you came near to me, all the heads of your tribes and your elders. And you said, Behold, the Lord our God has shown us his glory and greatness, 
and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. This day we have seen God speak with man, and man still live. Now, therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of the Lord our God any more, we shall die. For who is there of all flesh that has heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of fire as we have and, have, and has still lived? Go near and hear all that the Lord our God will say, and speak to us all that the Lord our God will speak to you, and we will hear and do it. And the Lord heard your words. And when you spoke to me, and the Lord said to me, I have heard the words of this people, which they have spoken to you. They are right in all that they have spoken. Oh, that they had such a heart as this always, to fear me and to keep all my commandments, that it might go well with them and with their descendants forever. Go and say to them, return to your tents. But you, Stand here by me, and I will tell you the whole commandment and the statutes and the rules that you shall teach them, that they may do them in the land that I am giving them to possess. You shall be careful, therefore, to do as the Lord your God has commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. O Lord, have mercy upon us.
The second reading is from John chapter 14. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not, and not to the world? Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord my God. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There were once two trees, both living next to this large stream of water. The first tree loved to dwell by this river, planted its roots deep by it, and was nurtured by that river every single day. It was fed with that water. It soaked it up. It loved it. And by that nutrients from the water, it produced fruit. This tree saw this river as the source of life and all goodness. The second tree, however, didn't view this river the same way. It would sit there by the river, looking out beyond at the other land around. It would see waters, lakes, seas, oceans, freedom beyond this river. This river was holding it back, keeping it from the freedom to go around. And so that tree decided one day to uproot itself and to go and journey out. Against the advice of the first tree to stay, that second tree went. He went chasing after all of what he could see, finally leaving behind this river that kept it from going to its true dreams and true goodness in life. Yet as it got closer and closer to that water beyond, the second tree learned very quickly that it was just a mirage. It was not oceans and seas and freedom and happiness far beyond, 
but wilderness, desert, no sustenance or life found for that tree, and that tree withered and died. This story of these two trees is what we see in the first psalm read this evening, and it gives a good summary of all of the different types of psalms that we see within this theme of psalms of wisdom. In these psalms, we learn what true wisdom is, not street smarts, not knowing how to navigate this world in a financial way or anything like that. But these wisdom psalms point to the true wisdom, wisdom that only flows in faith from God from his word, and from his teachings. We see this in some of the psalms that we have already prayed this Lenten season. Psalm 111, the first psalm that we prayed on Sunday, says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That wisdom is that faith flowing from God. Psalm 19 speaks of the law, the word of God, It says, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Not only is this law, this word of God, pure, but it is for your good. It gives you life. It opens your eyes, brings light to your darkness and gives you godly wisdom. Psalm 78, if you stuck along long enough to read the entire thing, all 72 verses, I believe, it gives a history of the Israelite people, beginning with these words, give ear, O my people, to my teaching, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. We will not hide them. Uh, Hide them from their children, but tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. And it recounts all of history for the Israelites in that point, showing what God had done, his faithfulness to the people, even in the midst of their sin. It shows God's faithfulness. And encourage the Israelites and Christians today to cling to that God. True wisdom always flows from God and from His Word. And we see this especially clear in Psalm 1. Verses 1 and 2 say this. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. This wisdom that this blessed man receives is not from this world, not the wisdom and intellect that the sinful culture has to give to us, but this wisdom comes from the law of God. Law here being Torah, the teaching of God. It is from this law, this Torah, that this blessed man meditates day and night, desiring that life that comes from it. Verse 3 then gives the imagery that I began the sermon with. He, the blessed man, is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season And its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. This blessed man is that first tree that did not see this river as something holding him back, but saw this river as the very source of life itself. And that river is the word of God. And as Christians, we are to plant ourselves by that river. To take in that blessed living water that we too may have life. The psalm then goes on to say, The wicked are not so, but are like chaff 
that the wind drives away. The wicked are like that second tree, thinking that they do not need that river to survive, but want to go on to bigger and better things, only to find that once you leave God, there is nothing but hardship, suffering, and death to come. So the psalm continues. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. When it comes to judgment day, those who have abandoned the word, who have not planted themselves in that source of life, will stand before the judge. And there will indeed be a separation between the righteous and the unrighteous, the believing, the unbelieving, the wise, and the foolish. I contemplated making one of the readings the parable of the ten virgins. Five wise virgins and five foolish virgins. Where Jesus tells this parable of these virgins, the bridegroom returns, the five wise virgins having oil in their lamps, enough for the night, they enter into the banquet hall, representing eternal life where the five foolish virgins did not have oil for the entire night, had to go and get some at the very last minute, and when they come to the banquet hall, they find the door shut. They knock on the door and say, Lord, Lord, let us in. And the Lord does not say, oh, well, you didn't do this, and you didn't do that, and tell them these things. But he says, I do not know you. This is what we see in this last verse here. The Lord knows the way of the righteous because the righteous have walked in his ways. They have been rooted in his word. And so he knows them because they know him. It is as Jesus said in John 14. To know Jesus is to know the Father, and the Father knows the righteous. But the wicked... They do not walk in the ways of the Lord. And since they do not know the Lord, the Lord does not know them. We see these two groups at play in Psalm 1. And so what do we draw from this psalm and other psalms of wisdom? We see that blessed are those who are rooted within the words and law of God. His teachings give life. And salvation. But for those who are not rooted in that word, there is not that blessing. And so for you, the Christian here, rooted in that word, why and when should you pray these types of psalms? You should pray these psalms of wisdom when you need encouragement to remain rooted in God's word. Whether you are already rooted in that word and wish to stay so, or maybe you have uprooted. Maybe you have decided to wander astray for a bit. These psalms can be a call of repentance to bring you back to that life-giving river that you may be planted in there once again and once again receive life and salvation that is promised to all who root themselves in that word of God. And so, as you continue to pray these psalms together, may you be like that first tree who is planted firmly in the streams of God, that you may receive that living water unto everlasting life. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand for the canticle. Let my prayer rise before you as incense.
seated for the offering. Please stand for the Kyrie on page 233. Guide the people of your church, that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. O oh God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. 